This week on STEM Week we got a LED solar system reduced by $4 for each and every variant and each and every color. Make sure to check it out, link will be down there in the description. Welcome back to another video. This is a little continuity. Is it a con? It's a continuation. It's not a continuity. That would have been weird. A continuity. This is a continuity. <laughs> English intensifies. This is a continuation of the video I posted yesterday where we talked about matrix um, factorials. And today I would like to calculate a concrete example, which is this one right here. And the answer to this is pretty surprising if you ask me because for matrix factorials there's something that holds infinitely often that only holds exactly two times for the regular factorial so this in itself is quite surprising which I find to be quite cool and yeah we are going to talk about it today if you don't know what we are going to do today so matrix factorial what whatever the hell that's supposed to mean make sure to check out the link at the top of the description there you can find a link to the corresponding video but before we get into the main video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Download4CC, for sponsoring this video. So to make things short and spicy, Download4CC is an online video downloader that you can use for completely free upon thousands of websites, be it YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, really doesn't matter, you can download them all. And when I say free, I mean for completely free. You neither need a sign up nor a subscription. All you have to do is go to your most favorite memes. You gotta copy paste the link and click on download. And now we are going to be scrolled down to either the download button or you can download other formats if you like. All you really have to do is click on the download button of your choice and now you are going to be redirected to a new window and you can save the video as and it's as easy as it gets. Like I said before, it's not really restricted to YouTube. You can also go on Twitter <coughs> and you can copy the video address. Once again, put it into here, copy paste and hence you are done. So basically, in a nutshell, there's nothing you could lose by trying out download for CC. I was using it for the past few days because they just now contacted me and I have to say I was able to download all the fresh memes that I um, that my heart desired. Um, so yeah, try it out and basically support the channel by just checking out their website and downloading a few memes from Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatsoever. And now we are going to dive into the main video. So we are going to take the factorial of this boy right here. Here. And if we were to take the factorial, okay, this is like a thick factorial, really, really thick. Um, it also happens that we need to diagonalize this boy right here, this, this matrix. This is just something that we have to do. We have experienced it firsthand when deriving the matrix factorial last time around. So meaning, at first we are going to take a look at the characteristic polynomial, meaning she of m. What was the characteristic polynomial? It was defined as being the determinant of our matrix m, not a, minus our eigenvalues times the identity matrix in two dimensions. And we want to set this equal to zero and solve the polynomial in our two eigenvalues. Okay, basically this is what we are going to do, second degree polynomial. Meaning overall, if we were to just calculate everything through. We are going to arrive at the determinant of just the entries of m subtracted by our lambda all the time, meaning negative 4 but only on the main diagonal because we are multiplying the negative lambda with the um, identity matrix. So this matrix is going to look like negative lambda, 0, 0, negative lambda. So negative 4 minus lambda, negative 3, 10 and also 7 minus lambda. And by the way, if you don't know what diagonalization is, just take a look um, at my old videos, Papa Fibonacci, etc. Links probably down there in the description too. There you can check out diagonalization firsthand. Okay, step by step. It's a good video if you ask me. And now we are going to compute this determinant. Meaning what we are going to get is, okay, negative 4 minus lambda, which is negative 4 plus lambda times 7 minus lambda and then negative and negative becomes positive so positive 30 being hence equal to 0. Now we can multiply both sides by negative 1. This is something that we can do because it's not equal to 0. Leaving us with this equation 4 plus lambda times 7 minus lambda minus 30 is equal to 0. If we were to solve this a tiny little bit more, you might notice that we must have that this multiplication of the eigenvalue thingies, okay, our lambdas is going to be equal to 30 overall. 
So now you could basically factor everything out, uh, out using the quadratic formula and just calculating the stuff um, overall. It's, it's going to be pretty easy. But what you could do instead is just take a look at how you could decompose the number 30 into factors and see if you can get those factors out on the side by plugging in the same values for lambda. For example, our 30 could be nothing but 5 times 6. This is something that could hold, meaning one of the factors must be 5 and one of the factors must be 6. Okay, this is just something that could work. And by accident, this does work if you plug in 1 into your lambda, you're going to get 4 plus 1 is 5 and 7 minus 1 is 6. 5 times 6 is going to give us 30, meaning overall the first eigenvalue is going to be nothing but 1. Now what about another eigenvalue? What you could also say is, well, 30 is nothing but um, negative 5 times negative 6. And maybe we could um, construct it in, in some way. This is maybe something that could work out. Okay, negative 5 times negative 6. I don't think that you could get it nicely here because you could have uh, 4 minus 9 is going to give you um, negative 5, for example, but then 7 minus minus 9 is overall 15. Doesn't work out. Okay, let us try for another round. Maybe the 5 and 6 does work yet again. Okay, what about 5 and 6? How could we get a 5 and 6 yet again? In before we had 5 being here and 6 being here. Why not try to get the 5 here and the 6 here? So 7 minus 1 is going to give us 5, 2. Okay, 2 into here, 4 plus 2 is going to give us 6, so that does work out. And we have another eigenvalue, lambda 2 being equal to 2. Okay, those are our two eigenvalues, meaning overall the diagonal matrix that we are going to get in the process, our di diagonal matrix T is going to be just our eigenvalues on the main diagonal, 1, 0, 0, 2. Okay, now we can go ahead and construct ourselves the eigenspaces basically, or just those S matrices that we are going to multiply and it's inverse with our t that we're having here. So here's the basic thing you are going to do. We are going to solve basically this kind of equation a tiny little bit. We are going to solve the homogeneous solution to this eigenvalue equation. Meaning we are going to take a look at m minus lambda 1, so the first eigenvalue times the identity matrix in two dimensions, multiplied by the first eigenvector being equal to the zero vector, to the null vector. Meaning overall, this is going to result in a certain um, system of equations. Okay, what is our matrix if we were to subtract our first eigenvalue from the main diagonal entries here? What are we going to get? I mean negative 4 minus 1 is going to give us negative 5 and negative 3 and then 10. What are we going to get here? We are going to get 7 minus 1 is going to be 6 overall. This multiplied with some x y okay, of the first eigenvector. We want this to be equal to the null vector. Okay, meaning we have a system of equations. The first equation is negative 5x minus 3y is equal to 0 and we also have 10x plus 6y is equal to 0. You might notice that those two are linearly dependent. You can just multiply the first equation by um, negative 2 and you're going to arrive at this one here. So the only thing that we really need to solve is for example if we were to just take a look at this one right here and multiply both sides by negative 1. One equation that you could look at is 5x plus um, 3y is equal to 0. Now you can solve for x and y respectively. To construct the eigenspace you are going to get an eigenvector in there which is a generalized thing but you can also say if we just want a concrete matrix that we can uh, use to actually uh, um, diagonalize this matrix M up here. We can plug in, for example, one value for Y because we are going to parameterize it. This right here is a, a linear dependent um, system of, of equations, meaning we can just put in a parameter for our um, Y in here. This is something that you can do. This is just what's going to happen. Let's say we are going to set our Y in a way such that we are going to get um, X and Y being equal to integer solutions out on the other side. Okay, so what could we choose y to be such that x is also going to be an integer solution? Let us solve this a tiny little bit at first. So we are going to get that x is hence nothing but negative 3y over 5. So if y is a multiple of 5, we are going to get that x is also an integer. I just want to have a nice little construction with integers here. This is how I constructed the matrix M in the first place. Took me quite a while to, to figure everything out, but it was kind of easy after getting the hang of it. So let's just say that y is equal to 5. So if y is equal to 5, we are going to get that our x is nothing but, okay, 5 and 5 is going to cancel out, negative 3. 
Meaning our first eigenvector, v1, is going to be nothing but negative 3 and 5. Now we are going to go through the same process that we did here with our second eigenvalue. Meaning instead of subtracting 1 from the whole thing, we are going to subtract 2 from the whole thing. So we are going to get one less. So here's a 6 and right here we are going to get a 5 out, if I'm not mistaken, 5 and 6. Yeah, this does seem good. And at first those don't really seem linearly dependent, but they are actually, if you were to expand this with 5 and this with 3, okay, then you basically get the same equations, this one with negative 5, then you're going to get the same equations. Meaning overall, if we were to write this out, we could also say that 6x um, plus 3y is nothing but 0. Okay, I'm just rewriting everything right now. Now you can divide both sides by 3 because it's not equal to 0, leaving us with 2x plus y is hence nothing but 0. And now we are going to solve for our x yet again, meaning we are going to subtract 1 both sides, we are going to divide by 2, leaving us with negative y over 2. Okay, how can we choose y such that x right here is an integer yet again? Okay, we can say y is nothing but, um, let's say 2. Okay, if y is equal to 2, we are going to get x being equal to negative 1. Okay, thus far that's good. We are going to have our second eigenvector here too. I mean, it's not um, needed that you have an integer solution here. I just think it's a bit more pretty if you want an end result with respect to integers as, as being the factorial. This was just my initial idea here. Okay, other than that, we are going to get that this is nothing but negative one and two. Meaning overall, our matrix S is hence nothing but just the tuple having our eigenvectors in here. This is just what's going to happen. So we are going to get negative 3 and 5 and also we are going to get negative 1 and 2. Now we can construct ourselves the inverse of our matrix S. Meaning we are going to have 1 divided by determinant of the matrix S. Okay, what's the determinant of this thing? We are going to get negative 3 times 2. So 1 over negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 and this is going to be positive 5. So plus 5, so overall this right here is negative 1. And now, what's going to be this other matrix that we are going to have here? This other matrix is going to be nothing but those two interchange, so meaning 2 up here, negative 3 here, and here we are going to change the signs around, negative 5 and also 1. Now if you were to multiply everything by negative 1 in here, we are going to get that s to the negative 1th power is hence nothing but negative 2, negative 1, 5 and 3. And now we have basically successfully diagonalized our matrix M. Meaning our matrix M is hence nothing but s to the negative 1th power times t times s. You can write everything out, but we are looking for our, uh, for, for our factorial of the matrix. Meaning if we were to take the factorial of the matrix M and here's where the good stuff is going to happen, okay? It's going to be nothing but s to the negative 1 times, and what have we learned? If we have the factorial of a diagonalizable matrix M, it's just going to be the factorial of the entries in here of the eigenvalues. Meaning this is nothing but the factorial, no, not, not the gamma function, just the factorial of 1, because this was the first eigenvalue, 0, 0, and the factorial of the number 2 times s. And now you might think, Daddy, you're such a bastard. Why did you went through all this shit right here? <laughs> Didn't make any sense because do you know what this right here is? This eigenvalue matrix that we're having here, this diagonal matrix is exactly the one with the entries where our um, factory is just going to spit out the argument in itself. So this right here is hence again 1, 0, 0, 2. And I thought after constructing it, that was kind of the cool fact, because you might now notice that m factorial is nothing but s to the negative 1 t times s, which is nothing but m. Okay, I just want to guide you through the process of diagonalization yet again, such that you know how you can do it for yourself at home. But in the process of doing so, um, I discovered this neat little fact. If you have a diagonal matrix where on the main diagonal you are going to have one or two in, in, in some way, they, they, they could be interchanged for example, really doesn't matter what s to negative one and s actually are, then you are always going to get your matrix m out on the other side as being the matrix factorial. The thing that only holds twice 
in Dracula factorial, in natural numbers. It's going to happen infinitely often here for our matrices M in, in some way. Really depends on your matrix M and how it's going to be diagonalized. But as soon as it has the eigenvalues 1 and 2 in some way, you're going to get that M factorial is nothing but your matrix M yet again, which I found to be really cool. Yeah, that was just a, a little exploration of how you can diagonalize yet again. So, so it was more um, recapping how to diagonalize in general. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video anyways. Um, you probably thought it's going to be a more satisfying result, but it doesn't matter. Just change around um, negative 4 to negative 5 and 7 to 8 and then start diagonalizing. And then you can come up with a very nice diagonalized matrix that you can take the factorial of. Okay? Just as a little reminder how to diagonalize for the people out there who have never done it before. Other than that, I thank you guys for watching. Still, if you enjoyed this very, very complimentary video, then please thank subscribe, my comment channel. Like, don't forget to check out the website of our today's sponsors, download for CC, um, be, because it's totally for free. There's really no login required, nothing. You can just put a link in there and download it, which I find to be really cool. I'm using it from time to time just because I'm downloading a lot of memes that I put into my videos, for example. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Check out Flamble Maths too. And up until the next video, I'm going to eat something now for dinner. Have a flamble day. Ciao. <laughs>